Greetings there, travelers. Get on in. Come on. That sky is even brighter than it was before. It has been going on for too long. I don't know what's happening. There's people falling out of the sky. There's weird beings starting to appear in different areas. Portals are going crazy. I... And the cultists are everywhere. They're all outside in the streets. are looking on in. I don't even know how you made it through them, honestly. Why don't you head on over to Wingover? He's uh, just dealing with a few of the magical sigils. Greetings there, travelers. It's me, Wing Over Gimbal. Famous name, bad. I see that you've also seen the, the lovely sky is still still acting so strange. We can't figure out what's going on, but we've reinforced the inn as much as we can. Hopefully, and I mean hopefully, we won't have to rebuild this thing because it's such a pain, travelers. Honestly, we even hired contractors. We had weird, like, secret rooms, and the inn kept changing around on its own before we could finally figure it out, and it was a huge pain. Renovations are the worst. All right, travelers, so, well, there's a horde of cultists looking through the windows, trying to get through the ceiling, and there's only a, a thin layer of magic keeping them away from us. Let's read some fan mail. Darkly enthralling. Five stars. The story is amazing. The characters are involved and relatable. The world building is intricate and incredibly deep, and the story draws you in but gives you no clues as to where it's going next, so it's always full of unexpected twists and turns. I love it! Exclamation mark! And that's from H.C. Royale. Ooh, or Royale? Royal. Well, thank you very much. That's from the United States of America. Thank you very much for the review. Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying our, our world and uh, how it's building up around the story. It's very fun just diving into the weird little quirks of this. Oh, Michael Coltis got in. Get him! Get him! He's scurrying. He's trying to get under the table. Get him! All right, you got him. They're just the worst. They're like, they're like roaches, honestly. Like... I'm all for the socialism that they're trying to bring in. Your free education, healthcare, and make sure people get fed and all that. That's great, but like, they keep turning people into monsters, and they keep butchering other people in the streets. And that's that's where I draw the line, you know. But well, let, let's move on. Um, gotta keep these sigils going. Um, what do we have to do? What do we have to do? Looking through the book, it, it just says keep telling the story. Well, super helpful advice, Wingover. Super helpful advice. I wrote this damn book and I don't even know what the hell's in it. Um, okay. Keep telling the story. Uh, where were we last time? Last time we were... Oh, travelers. Oh, no. Oh, it's alive again. Do you remember quite a while ago BattleBot sent us that plant? The talking plant? Nobody watered it because we were on vacation and it died. Oh god, travelers, it's alive. It must be all the magic in the air and the, the super strange sky and... Oh, travelers, it looks so terrible. Its face is still stuck in that scream. How oh, it wants to give it spiel. Oh, it smells. Okay. Come on over here, undead plant. Greetings. I come from Battle Bards. Head over to BattleBards.com and enjoy sound effects like Bark Skin and Entangle. And always be sure to water your plants. They're living things. Skill trip much. Alright, thank you very much, undead plant being. You can go sit over in the corner. Oh, it's so... The roots come out of it and let it walk. And that would have been really charming if... Okay, where were we last time? Last time our heroes had a... Right, MZ had disappeared. Everyone's like, whoa, what are we going to do? Then they all tried to look for MZ and they went on back to Sanctuary and talked to... Uh, they found out that something happened to Elwyn and they tried to park their wagon and 
Not very successfully, honestly. Uh, they bumped into someone, so they got to write up a little letter for that. But yes, now our heroes are back in Sanctuary. They're trying to figure out what happened to their missing companion, and they, they need to figure out how can they get to Enzi's home of Mithranor, and what the hell is with this map that Kelsar has, and so many other questions. Let's dive into this tale. The final tale of Act 2, Travelers. I bring to you... I'm coming home. Part 2. You fought so hard for so long. I'll admit it. I've never had a rival as powerful as you. I'll kind of miss this. But it's time for you to rest. The Chosen are done. Your responsibilities are over. I could feel it in that last battle. You were so tired. The fight had left you. You wanted to die. But you had too much pride to give up, so you wanted me to kill you. You could have dispelled that last blast. But you didn't. So let me end your suffering. Just as you've been wanting me to for years. You did an admirable job protecting them. But it is time their ward was laid to rest. Sweet dreams, Archmage of Mithdranor. That's it. Just go, Astoria. Just leave. Let them be. Don't worry, I won't make you into a corrupted. Just rest. There. Now to stop the... What? She is not done yet. You. What have you done? Her fight was finished. Her soul is in tatters. Let her rest. Haven't you done enough to her? With your lies and false war? No. Damn it! <coughs> Who's there? Elwyn? <coughs> Is that you? It's nothing, Astoria. Go back to sleep. I just... Okay. Thank you, Elwyn. Goodbye. The story. Mm -hmm. right. Hey, I'm Bright, and I'm playing Kalsar, the Tiefling Paladin and, and Chosen of Yetifa. Hi, uh, I'm Humberto, and I'm playing Borden, Dwarven Cleric and Chosen of Time. I'm Evan, and I'm playing Ronnie, the Half-Elf Bard and Chosen of Chaos. Hey, I'm Robert, and I'm playing Emzy, the Gith Yankee Ranger and Chosen of Blood. Hey, I'm Jason, and I'll be playing Drax here. The Dragonborn Artificer and Chosen of Machines. on Bowlet Seven Dice. Our heroes had all just made it back from Carcosa, the King in Yellow's domain. After which, MZ went missing and the party decided to head to Sanctuary to search for more answers. Along the way, Draxir had an interview, Kelsar had a frightening dream, and Ronnie had a plan. You all made, made it back. back. You made you it made to headquarters, headquarters only to be informed that Elwyn had passed. And after going in, Ronnie had taken off a different way. He said he had a few things to figure out while you guys looked into Elwyn's death. The three of you, Drax here, Kelsar, and Borodon, went over to Elwyn's room, and Borodon uh, lost it in a power trip, spinning around a chair, 
but discovered just how Elwyn died was from seeing Truth, and then something happened when he took Truth's left hand. So, what did you see, Boridon? Yeah, so, it's Truth. For whatever reason, Truth uh, killed Elwyn. I think I know the reason. It's probably my doing. Why? Oh, what? Why? Well, because remember when we were seeing the Yellow King? Yes. Draxir sacrificed his life to save... Astoria. And in turn... This makes no sense! And in turn, someone else had to die. That was the... Dis- but there was like a, a trillion, billion, gazillion people, and then they killed, like... Yeah, but that's random chance. It could have... It, 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 why couldn't it have been him? Basho can't... <laughs> could have been Tony from could, the market. Could be, exactly. <laughs> what difference does it make? That's that's a that's random chance. Could have been Ronnie. Well, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, they want him to live. <laughs> yeah, but but you, special force that you know keeps adding stuff to our game, need to kill like a. The DM. Yes, Lucas, the DM, but I mean, I'm not going to yell, DM! You know, damn you, DM! No, like... You just scream at fate. Damn you, fate! <laughs> Killing primary characters! Curse you to 20 giant sided dice of fate! You harsh mistress! <laughs> this was your, your decision. You guys rolled the dice. You took the gamble. I, I told you what could happen. You guys thought it was more important to save Astoria. No, what? Okay, here is the decision process, speaking out of game. So, Lucas laid out that if we let Astoria die, there would be some kind of crazy, uh, what is the term for them again? She would become a corrupted. Co- corrupted would come out of Astoria. Yeah. And she's like the most powerful allied person yeah, that we that have. Yeah, that would have been a problem. So the corrupted would be outrageously powerful because Noir turning into a corrupted was fucking nuts. Like, that was oblivion. That was a really hard fight. It would be like fighting Matthews, you know? Yeah, and Noir Noir was, like, nothing compared to Astoria. That's mean! Mm-hmm. That's a life right there. That's a life that was taken. Who's this to shit? <laughs> I do, because I actually really liked Ellen. It was a tough call to make. <gasps> And I told I told him to do it by accident because I was like, "Oh, he's probably going to kill off Elwin." <laughs> I I had already decided before that. I decided I had like four different characters I was cycling through who I was going to do this to. The morning of when we were doing that session, I was like, "It's it's got to be Elwin." I mean, you literally could have chosen anybody. He has such a badass story. He's so cool. But yeah. Now he's dead. I knew what I had to do. <laughs> I mean, he's no Dark Blade, but... Well, it seemed like the best thing to do at the time, and I still stand by the decision, but... It's hard to find out it was Elwin. Lucas could have killed anybody. Any- anyone. A- literally anyone. Like, could could have been Matthew. What kind of shit story would that be? It's like, and then, uh, fucking Sandra, uh, the uh, flower uh, shop girl, died. She, and she, you guys Sandra, like, oh. Sandra, the flower shop girl, who was killed by... Deathoroth. Oh, Sifiroto. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Sifiroto. <laughs> Instead of like that massive katana, he has like, yeah, a super large yeah. scimitar. Crazy <laughs> stuff. Just appears behind you. <laughs> just like a Pidgeotto. You know, it's like a oh Sifiroto. Did, did he evolve from Sephiroth? <laughs> yeah, you, you know it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are, are staying there. Drax here stands by his decision, but it was tough. What do you, what do you three want to do? So I'm, I'm going to find Roni to tell him about what happened. Oh. right? Because that's the most sensible thing for me to do now. You you find Ronnie and he's he's laying down. He has a super bad headache, uh. and uh, he he accepts the knowledge and like he just like kind of gives you a thumbs up. And he's got like a wet uh, a wet cloth across his eyes. Okay, that one's on you, Draxir. You killed Elvin. You killed an important character. 
Look, it, getting mad at each other is it gonna? We had to make make a decision, and based on how powerful the story is, she could have been an impossible fight for us. Like we we would not be ready. It would just be a slaughter. Yeah, no, I know, I know. I'm just I'm just kidding. Yeah, um, yeah. It was it was the right call. It is tragic that Elwyn is dead. Uh, we should mourn and thank him for his sacrifice. You know, it wasn't, but it wasn't against his will. But at the end of the day, we can't let his death be in vain. Why truth, though? I mean, because truth presented us. Yes, but truth works for the Yellow King. Still, like w- w- what I'm saying is, like it wasn't just truth killing Elwyn. It was. It seems like Truth was talking to Elwyn, and then Elwyn like said something, and then um, Truth just you know did like a no with uh, his head, you know, it, it disappointed. Maybe Truth just told him the truth. No, what what I feel like is like at least with me, he said like you either you can either fight this war or you can die here. So what I'm thinking is, did did the offer Truth presented to Elwyn, was it like a bad offer that Elwyn wouldn't take? And that's why he took Elwyn's life? Do we know that Elwyn was like a chosen? Yeah, he was. Did, did, did he have like a... Yeah, he had a symbol already. Yeah, so given that Truth typically recruits chosen... I think it's safe to say that Truth was acting as an agent of the King in Yellow here. I agree. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying that Truth wasn't, you know, like working for the King in Yellow and like doing his bidding. What I'm saying is, what choice was presented to Elwyn? Well, what I'm saying, because I've seen that. Does that matter at the point? Like we have to. We still have to find MZ. I know. Have we forgotten about that? Like, what difference is it going to make? No. Uh, what are we going to do? Yell at the king of yellow? Like, what? What are we going to do? Please tell me. What What are we going to do right now? Oh, uh, calm. Kalsor, it's okay. I suppose, Borodon, what I'm trying to say is that I don't think there really was a choice. I think that it was just Truth's time to come and take Elwyn as per the king in yellow's request. We can find out more later if we ever encounter the king in yellow again or some other powerful being but for now I think that's probably what happened here okay thank you Drexel now we have to find out how to get to the astral plane yeah we should try and find MZ as soon as possible or at least figure out if he's okay the survival is crucial to this mission we have to find a story now and find out how to get to the astral plane so yeah, there is a few people in the Chosen's ranks that are still quite proficient in magic. Like, you know, Elbito is very proficient. Um, he's like the the historian of the Chosen. You know, of course, Astoria has a great amount of magic, but she's still recovering. And, you know, Sargoth is very knowledgeable in magical technologies. Sargoth? Sure. We should start with, we should start with Sargoth then. That makes sense. Maybe Sargoth will take some interest in your map as well, if you're curious. That's a good point. So you're going to search out uh, for Sargoth? So Draxir leads you there. It doesn't take long. Like a, a wing of this area where you get there and you can hear a lot of like hammering and whirring and that kind of... like the, It sounds like somebody's working on something. You've never been in this door, the two of you, Bordon and Kelsar, that the door opens up. You see that there is just a ton of people in here. The space is larger than it should be, and they're they're working on a bunch of different like pieces of technology. And like you see, like every so often, like another person, like they're coming up and collaborating, working together, looking over things. And you see, there's this large walrus man. Sort of, he's just like walking through the area. Every so often, like somebody comes up to him, and like he he looks over something, he gives it a nod, and says something to them. And he's got like these two large tusks that are coming down. And there's a, almost like the temperature drops a few degrees as you enter into this room. He looks over and goes, Oh, <laughs> Drexia, yeah, <laughs> how you doing, boy? Oh, good to see you again, Sargoth. When he comes over, you feel the temperature drop even more. 
Ah, what, what are you looking for? You need something new, some fancy, those tools treating you right? Well, we need to find out how to visit the Astra Plane, if possible, to find MZ. Oh, you want to go there, huh? Well, that's, that's, uh, that's a tricky business. What do you got? What do you got for magic? Let's see here. And he's just kind of like, it, he quickly gets into each of your personal spaces as he's like looking over your gear and like, you know, he like taps on Bordon's hammer that he has. He picks up Kelsar's arm hey. and he looks at the bracer on it. And Kelsar, you have that bracer that Diana gave you that you used to get to like the, the Silver Shields area. Hmm, that uh, let's should do the trick. Uh, the, the thing on your palate in here, uh, it's out of juice, but hmm, if you found a pretty powerful portal, you could probably charge this thing up pretty easy. Silver Shield headquarters is gone for all that. For all intended purposes, it's gone, so I guess we could just use the bracer. Mm -hmm. So how, how do we charge this up so we can um, use it to get the astral plane? Uh, he's uh, sort of like looking over it. He's like, well, it's an older model, but <clears throat> if you if you get near a, uh, quite a powerful portal, uh, you need to make sure it's still on your arm. Don't want it flying off. Uh, just kind of, you either got to shove your arm right in that portal or get it as close as you can. And you just kind of, so you push these two gems down here and then uh, hold it for a few seconds. You'll see the light up. And when it lights up, it's ready. Excellent. Well, that's... That sounds easy, but knowing uh, <laughs> the journey so far, it's not going to be that easy. But um... Dude, would I know if this would consume or mess up the portal in any way? If it's too weak, it will just destroy the portal. But if it's a pretty powerful one, then it'll be fine. Okay. It might cause like a little bit of a blip, but like it'll be alright. Okay. Then I'm not concerned. All right. Um. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, um. I guess I should mention before I leave, um, I, I have this map with me. Um, do you know anything about this? Um, what it could do? Oh. He carefully, like, holds out this large, uh, hand, and it's ending in these claws. Like, do you mind if I see it? Uh, sure, go ahead. He gently unrolls it, and... Yeah, he's just looking over. You can tell he's really excited. His his whiskers are like kind of like raising up a little bit. Oh, baby, this thing is a relic. Oh, they used to use these all the time back in the Spelljammer days. Used to use these just to get around from world to world that they would visit on their ships. Oh wow, I can't believe you found one. Well, uh. It looks like... Let's see here. He takes out, like, a, this one device. It looks like it's, like, six magnifying glasses stacked on top of each other. He's looking over this uh, under these magnifying glasses. Uh, I don't recognize where this is pointing towards. This is a uh, pretty powerful stuff, though. I mean, this, this would do for your bracer if you wanted to use it. Like, what am I saying? Because I, I intend to go to that location after when I'm done finding MC, but it would ruin my ability to travel there when I'm ready to. No, not with this. This is strong. This is strong stuff. This here's an artifact. It's beyond just what we can make here. This is the craft of the gods. This is a, an art mage made this thing. Alright, I guess that solves that then. Thank you. Now, are you willing to part with it? After when I'm done with it, we can talk about it. Well, if you are done with this item, whenever that is, you bring it back here, I, th I think we can put it to good use. I'll keep that in mind, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Not until I, I visit that location. I, it's important to me. And, to, and the mission that I do so. Careful with these portals, they're, they're tough stuff. They're very powerful with these relics. Thank you. You'll be fine, though. He hits you on the shoulder, like, pat. It's supposed to be, like, a gentle pat, but it, like, damn near knocks you over. Jack, what? Jeez. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, hey, you'll be good. So, guys, um, I guess that's settled. I'm just gonna, before we go, I'm just gonna pat Sargoth on the shoulder and be like, thank you, Sargoth, and sorry to hear about Elwyn. Ah, hey, he's a good friend of mine. We've been through a few of these together, and... Uh, it's just tough to see him go. Yes, he was a good man, and his death will not be in vain. Yeah, uh, I think he, I think he redeemed himself quite well. I think he did a good job making up for the past, and he could rest easy. 
Just a question, if he was a chosen, why didn't he become something like Oblivion? We have no idea. Well, we're all still trying to figure out how he even died. Uh, <laughs> did we talk about it? Like, I don't even you know. know. I haven't, haven't thought about if it's worth bringing it up or we just play dumb for now. Do you trust him? Yeah, you've been working with Sargoth for the last five years. Dude. Like, yes. Yeah, that was just tell him that we uh, killed uh, Ellen because uh, we taught to the yellow, <laughs> the king in yellow, and we sacrificed one of our lives uh, to save us. Storia. Yeah, that'll be uh, convincing. It's just, it's just weird because I don't think like, like when we spoke to Ellen about the play, he didn't even really know who the king in yellow was. Period. Yep. No one knows who's given these symbols. Like they don't know the the benefactor who's handing out this power. It's like a mystery to everyone, aside from you now. So, like my my thought on it is, if everyone like this is like an organization that has existed before we came to Abir Toro, it's like uh, I don't I don't really know that they would take kindly, even if it even if they believed us. They were like, oh yeah, we talked to God before you, kind of thing. I mean, we, we technically are the chosen, so. But they're also chosen. But we just... are more more chosen, you know. But the chosen heir. <laughs> yeah, the chosen heir. You know it. I, if you want to mention it, I don't feel like bringing it up, but I'll spill the beans if you mention it. It's really up to you guys. Like, I don't even know this character, so. this guy. Mm. I don't know him either, but hey, Drexir, if you want to tell him, I won't stop you. No, I, I just want to continue on because I, I really, like, I think I would trust them, but that's still pretty fucking heavy to just, like, be like, oh yeah, we talked to God and he gave us a choice to choose between Astoria and Ellen. It's not a casual conversation, that's for sure. Yeah. Astoria in any other life in this whole universe. Right? Moving on. <laughs> okay, so we have the catalyst to open the portal. The astral realm. We need to we should probably find a safe safe spot to open this portal and then we can absorb the energy through my bracer and open that portal to the astral plane. Right, that makes the most sense, but and maybe we should prepare before we go ahead and do that. I agree. Wait. We open a portal that we don't know exactly where it's leading us to. Then we charge your brace, like your bracer, to open another portal for us to go into like that portal. Do you know how to close this, like this first portal? And what, what if, you know, like creatures start, you know, to go through like the portal? We don't even know where this portal goes to, like where it leads us to. So do you think maybe we should get some extra security to just um, in case? For certain. Okay. For certain. Portals are... That's a good point, Bardot. Maybe we should talk to Astoria then. Maybe she can set us... We can tell her our plan. And go from there. Yeah, let's pay Astoria a visit then. I do agree. See if she's doing alright. You walk over to Astoria's room, and it's been a while since you've been here, right? Because she's been in a coma for some time. You make it to her door, and it, you uh, you see it's closed, and you give it a couple knocks. And you don't really hear anything, and, but the door kind of cracks open when you knock, and you just see that she's laying down in this bed. Uh, it seems like they've they've changed around the stylings of her office to kind of like keep an eye on her instead of having her somewhere else because New Dawn blew up. So they they have like her bed in here. They move the desk uh, away, and they have it like a little more homey. They have this little nightstand that's right by her bed, and there's some flowers set up there for her. And it just seems like she's like laying down, uh, and her eyes are closed. Uh, the story is asleep right now. Do you think think it's a good idea to wake her up right now, or should we wait? Or I don't know. what do you guys think? Like the question is, how uh, like how long can we wait? to, you know... Maybe there's someone... Maybe there's someone lower in the command chain we can talk to. Maybe there's someone that's in charge for Astoria and while she's recovering. Can we talk, like, to Elbito? Elbito knows a lot of things. You see, she stirs in her bed. She kind of sits herself up on her elbows. Death shift? 
Hey, Astoria. Sorry, you're quite loud. Um, is there something I can help you with? Uh, sorry to wake you. Um, it's fine. Uh, I, I'm gonna cut to this chase. Um, MC's gone missing. And we need your help. Um, all right, one moment. She kind of, like, sits herself up a bit more in bed and puts the pillow behind her. How are you doing? I'm not good. But that's aside from the point. Um, what's happening with MC? We have reason to believe that he went home to the astral plane. And we need to get there. Mm. So we believe that he's not there on his own will. Why would the gift come for MZ? Why Is he important to them? I would think so. Um, is the prince of the gift Yankee. Her face drops. He's the queen's son. Oh. Oh. Uh-oh. What, what do you mean? That's bad. Their queen is horrible, Kelsar. Their queen is a monster. Any Gith Yankee who gets too powerful, who seems like a threat to her, she consumes their soul and turns them into an undead minion so that they don't rise up against her. She's a tyrant. Any monster can be slain. Well, she's a lich queen. I studied lich queens. It, it, it's... But why would their queen be an undead lich? That doesn't make sense. Well, she doesn't want to die and she wants to become a goddess, so... I guess that makes sense. <sighs> <laughs> she's obsessed with power. Any kind of power she tries to get her hands on. If she's discovered that MZ has some unique ability, I don't doubt it that she's after it somehow. We have to get there as soon as possible then. Shouldn't we tell her like how she's back like in the, the world of the living? Questions for later. Um... What was that board on? <laughs> yeah, Boron, what was that? So when Cal- I put my hand, my uh, my arms, my hips. So Drexer has some amazing news to you, and uh, Drexer, um, please tell her. Drexer, your your arm and Kelso, your eyes. Did you did you lose one of your lives? Did you perish? Yes, yes, we did. I um, yes, I died while fighting Oblivion. She uh, just nods her head, just like, "Oh, Oblivion! Is Oblivion gone? Did you did you slay Oblivion?" Oblivion has been defeated. <sighs> oh, sorry. There's just I am. I'm very much out of the loop on things. I'm um, sorry, Draxir. I, I interrupted you. It's a bit of a complicated story. Maybe it's best if I tell you once we're back from the astral plane. If we survive. Okay. So you need to make it to Enzi's city of Tulnareth. Hope to Draxir's friend, and my bracer could be charged with a power from another portal. I have this map here that can open that portal, and it could absorb enough energy without damaging it. But we need we need soldiers to, just in case anything comes from that portal. Where did you get this map, Kelsar? I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, that's the best answer I can give you. I, I don't know where I got this map from. The last time I saw this map, I was in Mithranor, well over a thousand years ago, hiding this map in the tower as our city was being destroyed, just before truth came to me. How did you get this map? This map should be destroyed. You're not going to believe me, but the truth is I had a dream. When I died, I had... I had a dream about my about my grandmother, and she gave this gave me this map and told me that this could be the map that could take me home. She looks at you very sternly. This map would take you home, not to the Silver Shield. It would take me to my my home, my real home before the Silver Shield. Kelsar, what are you? I I want to find out. I want to know who I really am. So I, I, I round up the group, and then I tell them, okay, so... You're having, like, a sidebar? Like, you're, like a little huddle away from Astoria? Or what? <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I'll just say, like, Astoria, just, just give us a minute. And then I take them outside or whatever. Mm. And then I explain, like, we're literally just piling up lies on top of one another. Or just, like, committing... This isn't a lie! 
I got this map from my grandmother. That's not what I was talking about. Like, what I'm saying is, if you don't explain, like, thoroughly what, what, we, what we have gone through to Astoria, we would just, like, be adding, you know, like, more and more questions, you know. To, and, like, I feel like she is, like, trustworthy enough. You know, we, we can just, like, explain what happened, explain about, like, the laughing yellow god um you know and we we could king in yellow i didn't want people to know i sacrificed myself to save well shot i mean aren't we sacrificing ourselves like ourselves every single day i mean you literally did the ultimate sacrifice right i mean the only difference is that we have more lives than other people but you did a great thing i mean you shouldn't be ashamed of and you, Drax, here. I mean... It's not that I'm ashamed for it. That's just hard to explain and maybe needs a little more time until the story is recovered. I mean, what, what, literally, what is hard to explain? I've talked to my god. We clerics, we talk to our gods every single time. I mean, you know, it's not like... Insane, I mean, maybe where you came from, maybe it's a taboo or maybe gods, they don't reach you guys there. Um, but, like, I think in this world, I think they're pretty much okay with that. You know, and the the more we can, like, explain to her, the more, like, while we're out, she can maybe research, you know, find more things. I mean, we trust her, don't we? Yes. Fine then, Borodon. We'll start slow, but if it goes bad, we have to bail on this conversation. Okay, so, what... Like, what do you think that would go bad? Like, what's the situation that's in your mind that would derail? I, I don't know, but the fact that she wants to destroy my only... The only thing that could take me to home and find out who I am? She doesn't want to destroy it. She just said that it was supposed to be destroyed in her home because her home was destroyed. And not just that, I mean... She, she wouldn't take that, like, you know, by force. First of all, she's not strong enough to do that. You know, and second, I don't think, like... It's of her personality. And and third, and, and like in the end of the day, like she's been alive for more than a thousand years. She has all the right, you know, to be, you know, startled that you have this map, right? I mean, we're messing with time and space and talking to gods directly and all of that. I mean, isn't that like, does, doesn't that give enough, like give give us enough ground for us to stand on and explain things? Let's go in. Alright. We'll tell her everything. You see, she's she's still sitting on her bed, with her back sort of leaning against the wall. She's holding on to her wedding ring, just kind of like, uh, like going over it with her thumb. Sorry for getting upset. Kelsar, if what you're saying is true... And this is taking you home. You're... Not a tiefling. What do you mean I'm not a tiefling? Not exactly. Wait. I... I'm a tiefling. There are laws. There are laws of the universe. Just as much as there are laws around magic and space, there are laws around life. And... There are some that are viewed as taboo, that uh, things that should never be dabbled in, and I was doing research on this long ago when I was one of the head mages of Mithranor. This is a protected settlement. It exists between worlds. It was for beings of mixed blood of angels and demons in the eyes of many 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 beings and gods you shouldn't exist Kelsar you're a Nephilim what's a Nephilim? what are you talking about? I should, what do you mean I shouldn't exist? you're an offspring of demons and angels what? 
That's crazy. I just... I... I... My god. The existence of these beings is such an affront to nature that often both angels and demons hunt them down to kill them. Many beings will just eradicate any that they come across so that what I was researching was there was uh, a village that was hidden outside of time and it was all filled with them living peacefully. I was trying to figure out a way to get there using this relic when Myth Draenor was attacked and when Truth found me. Who attacked Myth Myth Draenor? It was a long time ago. There was uh, demons, uh, goblinoid races, orcs, just hordes of enemies of the of Myth Draenor. We were a progressive city-state at the time. Many races lived without animosity, and uh, some did not like that, and they did not like seeing our our prosperity. You should find the answers you're looking for if you're trying to figure out who you are. I was not able to ever really contact the beings of that that town, but I had this map configured properly. It should it should take you there. You two can go with him. That shouldn't be an issue. I see. What about we have to save Emsy though? Yes, that's a whole other ordeal. I'm not strong enough to make a portal to the astral realm. No one here is. Maybe the purple mage might be able to help. Uh, this is this is difficult. If we just had some large magical source, this wouldn't be an issue. You could use this. I. It's been a long time since I've seen this item. I can't guarantee what it'll be like when you try to use it, but it it's possible. So we can give it a shot. Thank you. Thank you, Astoria. I think we know where to go for, from, from here. Get some rest. I don't think it should be dangerous going in there, but as always, proceed with caution. Thank you. Please get some rest. She slips her, her wedding ring. She was kind of like fiddling with it while she was sitting there, and she just puts her ring back on her hand and nods at all of you and sort of lays down. Do we have an idea if, like, Astoria's wounds slash issues are purely physical, or...? Um, well, she got in a pretty big fight with Dorum. They figured that they just really messed each other up, and even though they gave her magical healing, it was just, like, a matter of time. Okay, this isn't something that, like, my new, like, medical arm powers would really be able to help with, or...? You could try. Okay, I'm gonna attempt that and see... To try to see if you can, like, at the very least, like, try to diagnose her, figure out what's going on. Yeah. It's going to say, a story, uh, I'm going to try to help you recover a little faster. Oh. Oh, what can you do? Well, with this, and I hold up my arm, I might be able to kind of diagnose what's going on and maybe help speed up the healing process. Um, all right, is there anything you need me to do? I don't think so. Just lay still. So you can uh, make a medicine check with advantage. That's uh, 22. So you're you're looking over her. She overexerted herself definitely when using her magic and her powers. So there was a lot of damage that was just like just drain from her, just pure exhaustion. And it looks like the physical damage is mostly better, but you see her legs look like they're going to have some permanent damage to them. She's going to need something to help her walk. You could try to help. Uh, and when you all see Draxir doing this, he takes his hand, and it's like the hand like it expands. You see like the mechanical components of it just like expand out. You hear this whirring sound, and for some reason, Draxir, you don't see anything, but you just kind of know what's going on. It's like you're you're bringing it over her. It's like you're, the mechanical components of this arm, they're just speaking to you, giving you this information. And yeah, you can see there's definitely permanent damage done to both of her knees. 
and the rest of it is it's just pure drain she's just been recovering and she it does look like she is getting better but you could maybe help her legs but as far as uh her magic if you had like some large source of magic like a a ley line or something she could try to tap into it to gain her strength back i see so like she wouldn't be able to walk basically without some kind of assistance okay now i'm just deciding like is this the kind of thing you would risk surgery for or do i spend my time just trying to make like an exoskeleton or something you can do either or. You, you don't know how, but you have the knowledge of like what you would need to do for both situations. Okay. Because you got so high on your medicine roll. Um, I just Would it take a long time to do? I imagine it would to perform like a surgery. The surgery itself, it, you'd definitely be looking at like a day. You're spending like a day on that. You got to prep everything as well and get people to assist you. Uh, that that exoskeleton suit to help her walk like just like some things for her legs you could probably finish that in like two days okay I'll just tell her Astoria you may not be able to walk without assistance but I think I can figure out a solution once we have some free time oh I, I haven't really tried to walk I see thank you Drexier I would appreciate that. Yes, take it easy and rest as much as you can. Hydrate before you dehydrate. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> <laughs> she lays back down and you, yeah, you close the door behind you. What would you like to do? We never actually told her anything about like the, the king in yellow and our experience. Oh, do you want to go back? Do you want to like actually talk to her? Oh no, I mean she's probably like tired as hell, but a Nephilim. Yeah. I mean I've heard of that. I, I read about that. It even in your religion, which is very much about um, the pursuit of knowledge, they're even still considered abominations. Like it, it's you know like you you've met you you know Kelsar. He's a good person and like but like all of it was like you know old text like hearsay from old clerics going. And these abominations came, and they'll destroy the land if they're allowed to walk on it. And you've seen Kalasar, and he's probably one of the better people that you've met in your life. The Old Testament of Yag... Er... <laughs> there's, there's a lot of fear, though, around the Nephilim. Yeah, I mean, but I know that they're powerful creatures. Yes. And I do know that when there is fear of, like, someone being powerful... They usually they usually try to exterminate those creatures. My conclusion that I draw is that Kelsar, like people killed the Nephilim and they were afraid of the Nephilim and wanted to exterminate them because they were afraid of their power. You know, not because they're necessarily like evil or an abomination. So I'm I won't treat mm. Kelsar like any different. Mm-hmm. So that's it. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I was just going to say that he's like he's strong, and um, I do I do respect what he's going through, and uh, it is like a huge revelation, right? I I'm still processing this. It's gonna take me a little while to do so. Thank you, Bordon, for for your support. As always, it won't change anything between us. I'm still. I am still the person that I am, and that hasn't changed. For sure. Of course, Kalsar. We'll deal with this. The time is right. For right now, our priority now is, is still MZ. We have to find him. So what would you like to do? Uh, we have to find uh, the Purple Nade, right? You could try to go see him. That's one option, yeah. I do know where he lives, right? I mean, I trained with him. Yep. So, I told the group that. So he's on a la on an island, sailing like maybe just like a twenty minute uh, sailing, um, you know, away from like where we are, and we should go to the docks. Um, yeah, to get a boat to get to this island. It's actually a really good place for this, anyways. It's probably a good idea to keep the portals away from people. 
yeah, but like the level of magic there is so much. Like I've dealt with magic before, of course, um, and I've seen some like crazy things, like because portals they draw like. You need a lot of magic to open them up. They also draw a lot of magic. You know, like, they, they sort of drain a lot of magic. And um, they may become unstable. Uh, what, what I'm saying is, I'm not saying that we shouldn't open a portal there. I'm saying that there are, there, you know, like, maybe we should be careful, you know, that's all. You do make a good point. When there's too much magical energy in an area, it can cause a spell to go awry. So if you're, you're trying to open up something big there, it might pose a bit of an issue. Maybe we don't even have to, like, to open the portal. Maybe the purple, ma the purple meat will have something, you know, to, to help us on that one. It's good to have options. Yeah, for sure. I think, like, regardless, I just think that the portal would be, you know, our last, like, literally, like, our last option. If everything else fails, we just open the portal, and then you drain the magic from the portal. All right. I agree. Well, let's go visit the Purple Mage, then. So, Kalsar, while you're leaving the headquarters, roll me a perception check. Uh, I rolled a six, so... Ah, you know, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't really, you're just like, you know, you're stressed, you're really distracted, you you all head out to the docks, it doesn't take long getting there, you see the, you guys kind of pass by that warehouse that you blew the doors off of, Kelsar knows nothing about this, <laughs> but you see, like, they still have this, like, roped off with yellow police rope, <laughs> and there's still, like, a, the odd officer that's, like, writing something down while they're, like, looking at something, like, it, it's been a few weeks, but, like, they're still clearly investigating this area. Because a mass murder <laughs> happened, and they need to look into it. <laughs> and it's just like a few people like shaking their heads, like oh, I don't know, <laughs> like while they're like standing outside. <laughs> Some thunder wave fishing going on. Yeah, <laughs> and you you find there's a there's a few people down at the docks, like they're sitting in some like rowboats and there's fishing. There's a few that like you know they. They see your eye board on. You see the same man who gave you a ride over to the Purple Mage's Island. He's there just fishing. So I just go to him and, like, hey, say, hey, um... Oh. Yeah, you've probably used his service quite a few times, like, going back while you are like, training <laughs> and stuff. Mr. Johnson. Oh, hey, board on. Uh, yeah, th that's my name. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's me, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> okay. Back to the Purple Mage's? Yes, please. Um, yeah, like as soon as possible. All right, that's one silver. Yeah, I, I give him like two silver. <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> you're a peach. Good. You're a good man. <laughs> I give away money to <laughs> poor people. Yeah. <laughs> so he starts like rowing you all uh, over to the island. Yeah, it's been a weird weather going on lately. All three of you make me perception checks. Eighteen. Uh, eight. I got ten because herder. Traxier, you're the only one noticing this. So while you're while he's rowing, he's talking like, "Oh yeah, the uh, warehouse just blew right up. It was uh, quite the sight to see. It scared the fish away for a good day, though. It kind of sucked." And while he's just like he he's just like talking about this stuff, Draxir, you hear like this faint humming, and you see the the map. Uh, like Kelsar has it sort of like tucked into one of his satchels, and you see like there's an obvious glow that's coming from his bag, of where this map is, as and it's like getting stronger and stronger as you're uh, going towards the island. Kelsar, it looks like your map is reacting. I, I, uh, I'm, like, all frustrated, like, oh, God damn it, why? <laughs> <laughs> I told you, we gotta save Emzy. <laughs> Throw the map into the water. <laughs> you pull out this map, and, uh, Bordon, it's exactly as you were talking about, as, like, you're, you're going closer and closer to the island, 
you can like feel the magic in the air, right? As you're getting near here. And you're very attuned to this place now. You've been here for a while. So as you're getting closer, you can feel the magic and you're looking at this artifact and it's just like, it's damn near shaking in Kelsar's hands. Oh, she's, this is a, uh, oh, maybe I sh- maybe we- I shouldn't bring the map here. Maybe we should go back. All right, here we are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hey. Too late now. I got used to this. I'm getting some pretty good <laughs> arms. No, it, he's like, no. Do you want me to row you back? Is there? Uh, I'm concerned that this map's gonna blow up in my hand if I keep going any closer. Um, what, what is the map like? Rolled up, usually. Like, is that normally how it's carried? Yeah. I'll just say, well, we can leave it at the edge of the shore here with Utrid, and I'll have Utrid let me know if someone comes. That's a good idea. And then I'll, I guess I'll take a piece of string. Wait, I probably have hemp and rope in my inventory. You you do. So I will tie it to Utrid with a piece of rope, but kind of try to conceal it as much as possible so it's not like just some brightly glowing paper out in the open. Yeah. So the the guy just kind of like sits near Utrid, and he's just like he cast his uh his rod into the water. He's like, yeah, when you get back, I'll uh, take you back to shore. Thank you. Can I try to... I don't think it's possible, so I would be making things up. Can we retcon that? We'll say I close like a little chest panel on Utrid to like mm. completely conceal it, and then I'll cast uh, Arcane Lock on that little panel. Oh, nice. There's like this 50% chance that the portal will open, like, and Utrid will be, you know, split into two, but... I guess. It's way better than one of us getting split in two. I totally agree. <laughs> Utrid words <Shit>. like <laughs> Just, I don't know if I'm comfortable leaving the map behind. Maybe I should just go. I don't know. I I, I don't know what to do. Everything's happening. I think at, like the fast we we get to to the purple mage and we talk to him and the and we get back, the like the better. You know, so we can solve this, you know, as fast as possible. And, uh. I guess so. Hey! What the hell's that over there? What do you mean? And you look over and you see Mr. Johnson, he's he's pointing out uh, back towards where Sanctuary is, and you see far off into the east, you see the sky is getting bright, like a bright white light. And it's like the the whole other half of the sky. It's not above you. It's not... It looks like it's miles upon miles. Like, it must be, like, thousands of miles away. But it's bright over there in the sky. I like that we went from a situation that we have absolutely no quests to, hey, now we have, like, those crazy amount <laughs> of very important quests happening. But they are all important. Finding MZ is important. Going to, to Kelsar's home world is important. And me going back to to my own dimension to help my, my, my brother. It's also very important. And everything's just happening at the same time. You hear a concerned whirring sound from Utrid. As you can hear its chest rattling a bit. Uh... Actually, open Utrid, please. I... All right, fine. Yeah. I mean, we could have had the fairy guy bring Utrid back, but... Back to Sanctuary. We thought that it was, like, <laughs> yeah, the Sanctuary. Now, the light is getting brighter. Kelsar, it's just like from your dream. You all start feeling an immense pressure. It's just like you feel your legs just, like, buckle down. Like, suddenly gravity has increased tenfold. As, like, you're having a hard time standing... Kelsar, you're looking up at the sky and this light is blinding just like in your dream as you're you're clutching on to this map uh, and you feel like uh, like you feel it just thrumming in your hands and you hear Mr. Johnson going, what the hell's going on? I, I don't know. We're going to owe him a lot more. For this I'm going to use protection on Mr. Johnson. I don't want him to die. 
This light goes over him. He's like, I feel a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. As you watch, Kelsar, once again, the other thing that happened in your dream, you're watching as these long pillars of white light are coming out. And then they start curving and moving like tentacles as they're coming down towards the land. And you feel like, all of you feel just this pressure. You can hear screams coming from everywhere. You watch as one of the rocks that was a part of the Purple Mage's Tower falls and like smashes into the water. And you see like the odd building like just start collapsing in on itself and like buckling down. What do you all do? Let's open the map. Hey, fuck it, we're going. You don't have to. I, this, these are two different things right now. I'll, I'll say that much. Okay. Do you? So with that, with that in mind, do you still want to open up the map? So the map is separate from the finding light. That's right. But you had a dream where both of them were going on at the same time. Sh- should we deal with like the light first? Yeah. So there's these tentacles that are coming down, and you know for a fact they're thousands of miles away, and they look massive as they're like starting to hit into the ground. Are they actually like tearing the ground apart? Uh, you don't hear anything when they hit. So there's no like rocks flying and like debris and all that, no? Not right now, no. Bordon and Kelsar, your divine connection to your abilities suddenly cuts. Okay, now I am a warrior. Where's your god uh, now? Damn. Yeah. <laughs> you, you just suddenly, it, it feels like like you can't breathe, right? You've had this for so long, suddenly it's gone like <gasps> <sighs> This map's just rattling in your hand. Uhtred's whirring as it's like buckling down into the ground. You see like little nuts and bolts are flying off of it. All of you take 15 points of damage as you feel yourselves like compressing into the ground. What I tell Kelso is do not give in because this can't be good. You start hearing a loud, deafening. And I need everyone to make me uh, acrobatic checks. I'm gonna use my flash of genius. I, can, I don't yep. know if there's like a nearby rock I can like jump off of or something. Uh, you'll probably use it to stabilize yourself because that's like a shock wave coming. Oh, okay. A three plus one, which is four. I uh, rolled a seven. I right, have 17 altogether. So, Drax here, you hold on to one of these large stones that's nearby, and Kelsar and Bordon go flying back as. You watch like this duck. First, it's like a wave of force comes. You hear windows shattering, uh, people screaming, and then it's just silence as it goes right over you. And then this wave of dust comes. It comes right over, and it's blinding. Kelsar, the map rips out of your hands, and you see if like it's uh, because the force of the wind is still going. You see it's like pressed against a rock, and it's just. I have to get that map back. A few feet away from you. Board on you are tumbling like head over feet, head over feet, like a backward somersault as you're just like going up the stairs. <laughs> and Draxir, you're holding on, and like you see blood coming from your nails as you're like gripping onto this stone. You all take another okay. 15 points of damage. I'm gonna go grab my map. Alright, uh, make me an athletics check. A- am I am I seeing Kelsar trying to grab like the map? Can I use, uh... You are too far away to use guidance if uh, that's what you're doing. <laughs> I'm spinning way too fast. Uh, I... <laughs> yeah, you, like, you see kills or don't. See kills or don't. <laughs> I, I rolled a 22. Like, a 22 total. You crawl with this immense pressure on you. You grab onto the <clears throat> map. You hear <sighs> this roar. This deafening roar coming through, and all of you remember this roar. This roar is that exact same roar as the creature that consumed the planet before you in that vision. 
you hear it as these tentacles are ripping into the ground. Oh. Kelsar, you grab onto the map and you're you're holding on as like the pressure and everything is like blowing you back. Uh, you all got one last thing. What would you like to do? Open the fucking map. Like use the fucking map. You can. Yeah, we go through the portal. Yeah, if we can try to open that portal, it's kind of what we gotta do. Alright. I guess we have to go through that. So you open up the map and you see like the dot is right over top with the dot where you are. You watch as this portal opens up. And it's like ripping up the ground. These ethereal arms are reaching out. You can hear Kelsar, come on. As like one of them grabs onto you and the others grab onto Draxir, Uhtred, and it catches Bordon by the foot as he's flying back and drags him in. And all of you get sucked in as you watch the blinding white light of the east just sort of like dims down to a nice quiet white. And you all go inside. Thank you, Mal. You can bring them in here. Yolanda! You've given us quite the chase. How long has it been since I've actually seen you? Ten years? Go to hell. I'm not gonna give you any information on my brother. My. How old you've gotten. Running from world to world. Don't you know that time works differently depending on the plane, dear Yolanda? Apparently it wasn't long enough to avoid you and your ilk. Do not speak to my friend that way. She brought you here because I asked her to. If she had her way, she would have nothing to do with this at all. Sorry, Mal. You're right. I shouldn't get worked up. I just hate people treating you like this. You mean to tell me that this creature was a person before this? She's still a person. She was cursed with this form because of me. When we first encountered our savior, its power was too great. Our minds cracked just from being in their presence. And then when we were granted strength, we couldn't take it anymore. The first few decades I had that power, I barely had control of myself. Even when you saw me in Mons Ragnum, I wasn't even fully myself. I felt like I was constantly pulling versions of myself back into me. Like that strange clone chosen. Quintos. Yes, him. So you destroyed my home, killed my father, had my brother beheaded because you couldn't control power you were given? What the hell? <laughs> That's right. I did do that. And you have every reason to be angry. I destroyed all you held dear while I was trying to clean up this multiverse. I apologize for not having control over myself. But know this, Yolanda. In every single scenario, I would have always killed Borodon. That god's damn chronomancer has been a thorn in my side ever since he entered this world. He has warped time, brought about inevitables, and kept that bumbling band of misfits alive for too long. I will kill your brother as many times as it takes to free the mortal species from the godly tyranny. Put her in. No! You can't... Dora! <sighs> Sorry, Mel. I know you don't like seeing me get like that. These damn chosen and plane walkers just get on my nerves sometimes. Soon, dear friend, soon we will free you from this form and return you to who you used to be. Please hold out just a bit longer. I will. You take care as well. Watch over that idiot King Leland just a bit longer. I will have a use for his affinity with that harp very soon. <gasps> it's happening! 
Mal, look out the window. It's really happening. We did it. Our savior is here. Azathoth has come to save us. The Chosen have nowhere else to hide. coming out of the sky that seems to oh my god michael it's happening it's happening it, the, the part in the story i was reading the future future me wrote this stupid book it's happening damn it get down wing over get down under the table get over here on dead plants over here oh god shit what the hell damn it <sighs> Oh my god, it's pressing me to the ground, Michael. What is this feeling? You were reading it in that stupid book. I have to read the book. I didn't know I was going to tell the future. I thought all this stuff already happened. What the frick? Are you meaning to tell me that this stuff has been happening this whole time? In, in, like in real time? I guess so, but... Oh my god, what the hell? What's that... What's that creature roaring? I think you know what that is. I think that's Azathoth. Oh god, it's here. It's made it into the world. We're doomed. Just have to keep reading that stupid book. There's nothing in the other pages, Michael. All the pages are empty. Oh god! Oh, that was hot! The, the pages are empty, Michael. There's nothing. I have to wait for the pages to have more words in them. I can't just make more frickin' stories. I mean, I'm a bard, I'm a great bard, but I don't just make this stuff up. Future me writes in this goddamn thing. Well, you're gonna have to figure out how the hell to contact future you and write faster, because that damn thing just broke through the whole network that the gods set up. I don't know how much of this damn world we just lost, but we need to get that story told. The inn's still in one piece. The cultists look like they, they're either dead or gone. I don't know what the hell. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to start repairing the place. You, you figure out that damn book. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to go talk to future me. That's super easy, because everybody does that. Everyone just talks to the freaking future. Oh my, oh my, plenty you lived. Well, that's something. Oh, my favorite chair's broken. Oh. I hate this. 